Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, picture this. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, our favorite royal rebels, are living their best California life. They've got the mansion, the Netflix deal, and apparently, two adorable kiddos, or do they? Coo dramatic music. That's right, folks. The internet is buzzing louder than a swarm of bees at a honey factory with the latest royal conspiracy theory. And let me tell you, this one's a doozy. We're talking fake birth certificates, ghost children, and more plot twists than a soap opera marathon. Now, before we dive in, let's all take a deep breath and remember that I'm just your friendly neighborhood critic, here to spill the tea and maybe crack a few jokes along the way. I'm not here to say what's true or false. I'm just here to entertain and maybe make you think a little. So, don't go calling the palace or anything crazy like that, okay? All right, let's break this down. The latest bombshell to hit the royal rumor mill is that Dr. Drake, the physician who allegedly issued Lilibet Diana's birth certificate, has confessed to faking the whole thing. I mean, talk about a plot twist. It's like finding out that the butler did it, except in this case, it's the doctor who didn't do it. Now, I know what you're thinking, but we've seen pictures. We've heard stories. Well, buckle up, buttercup, because according to the conspiracy theorists, those are all part of the grand illusion. They're saying that Team Sussex has got a crack team of photo editors working overtime, churning out pictures of these ghost children faster than you can say, God save the queen. And those public appearances, apparently they're using a rotating cast of child actors. It's like a royal version of the parent trap, except instead of twins switching places, it's random kids pretending to be royal babies. I got to say, if this is true, those Sussex PR people deserve a raise or maybe an Oscar. But wait, it gets better. Remember when Meghan accidentally confessed to the whole thing? No, well, according to the rumor mill she did. Apparently, she let slip some comment that the internet has latched onto as ironclad proof of this whole ghost children theory. Because, you know, accidental confessions are totally a thing that happen in real life and not just in badly written crime dramas. Now let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture here. Why would Harry and Meghan go to all this trouble? Well, according to the theorists, it's all part of a master plan to blackmail King Charles and manipulate the monarchy. Because apparently, fake grandchildren are the ultimate bargaining chip in royal politics. Who knew? But here's where it gets really interesting. The conspiracy theorists are saying that if Meghan ever does bring these kids to meet the royal family, she'll just use paid actors as body doubles. Because, you know, the royal family, who've literally known Harry his entire life, wouldn't be able to tell if these were his actual children or not. Makes total sense, right? Now, I've got to hand it to the people spinning these theories. They've got imagination for days. It's like they've taken every soap opera trope, mixed it with a dash of royal drama, and sprinkled it with a healthy dose of internet craziness. The result, a conspiracy theory so wild, it makes flat earth look positively mundane. But here's the thing that really gets me. In all this hullabaloo about fake birth certificates and ghost children, we're forgetting something pretty important. These are real people we're talking about. Harry and Meghan might be public figures, but at the end of the day, they're just two people trying to live their lives and raise their family. And let's not forget about the kids, whether they're real, fake, or somewhere in between. Ghost children? Half-ghost children? The possibilities are endless. Imagine growing up and finding out that half the internet doesn't believe you exist. Talk about an identity crisis. But you know what? Maybe that's the point. Maybe all this speculation, all these wild theories, they're not really about Harry and Meghan at all. Maybe they're about us. About our need for drama, for scandal, for something to gossip about over our morning coffee. In a world that often feels chaotic and unpredictable, there's something oddly comforting about these conspiracy theories. They give us a sense of control, a feeling that we figured out some grand secret that the rest of the world has missed. It's like we're all playing detective, piecing together clues, and coming up with outlandish theories. But at what cost? 
While we're all busy debating whether Lilibet is real or not, we're missing out on the real issues, climate change, social inequality, global pandemics, you know, the small stuff. It's like we're so focused on this royal drama that we've forgotten about the real world around us. And let's be real for a second, even if, and that's a big if, any of this were true, does it really matter? In the grand scheme of things, whether Harry and Meghan have two kids, no kids, or a whole Brady Bunch situation going on, does it really affect our lives? Spoiler alert, it doesn't. But hey, I get it. It's fun to speculate. It's entertaining to imagine these wild scenarios. And let's face it, in a world that can often feel pretty grim, sometimes we need a little escapism. Even if that escapism involves ghost children and fake birth certificates. So, where does that leave us? Well, if you ask me, and since you're still reading, I'm going to assume you are, it leaves us with a choice. We can either keep diving deeper into this rabbit hole of royal conspiracy theories, or we can take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Maybe instead of obsessing over whether Lilibet is real or not, we could focus on the real children who need our attention. The ones who don't have access to education, or healthcare, or even basic necessities. You know, the kind of causes that Harry and Meghan themselves have championed. Or maybe, just maybe, we could take all this creative energy we're using to spin these wild theories and put it towards something positive. Imagine if we put as much effort into solving real-world problems as we do into dissecting every aspect of Harry and Meghan's lives. We probably have flying cars and world peace by now. But let's be honest, that's probably not going to happen. As long as there are public figures, there will be public speculation. As long as there are royals, there will be royal drama. And as long as there's the internet, well, there will be conspiracy theories. So, what's the takeaway from all this? Well, if you ask me, it's simple. Enjoy the drama, revel in the speculation, have fun with the wild theories. But remember, at the end of the day, it's just entertainment. Don't let it consume you. Don't let it blind you to the real world around you. And who knows, maybe one day, years from now, we'll all look back on this and laugh. Maybe Lilibet and Archie will write tell-all books about growing up as ghost children. Maybe Dr. Drake will get his own reality TV show. Stranger things have happened, right? So stay tuned, my friends. Because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the Royals, it's that the drama never stops. And neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.